Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounsal Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about uniform electric fields. So put down today's title, it will be Uniform Electric Fields. This will be found in the second year of A-Level Physics, guys. The second year of A-Level Physics. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we have the following diagram. Here we have a cell and we have it connected to two metal plates. So here we have the metal plate at the top. We also have a metal plate at the bottom, guys. We have a metal plate at the top and a metal plate at the bottom. So the cell is connected to both of them. Right, so the cell, this terminal will be positive because, oops, let's change the color of the pen. There we go. So it's positive right now. Okay. Long stick is positive. So if that top plate is positive, what happens is all the electrons on the top branch will be dragged towards it. So all the electrons, from, let's say there's loads of electrons on this wire, they will move towards here. And obviously, if all the electrons move towards there, this terminal, therefore, has a deficiency of electrons, therefore becomes positively charged. Okay? And let's say the bottom part of the cell is negatively charged. Yeah, it's a small stick. It will repel electrons along that wire all the way onto that metal plate over here. So this part becomes negatively charged. Easy stuff. I'm just going to erase the, the electrons for now because we don't need it, uh, but it's nice for us to look at here. Right, okay, so the top plate will be positively charged, the bottom plate will be negatively charged. Today I want to talk about the region in between those two plates. So the region in between the two plates here. So we're going to talk about the region in between. So what is going on in this region? So what is this region? So what is this region over here? Okay, right, so let's do the following here. Let's say I was to take an electron, so we take an electron, yeah, and let's say I throw it in this region here, so we drop the electron over here. Okay, so here is my electron, let's call it E- minus for the electron over here. What is going to happen to that electron? So we've taken an electron, we've placed it in that region here, what's going to happen to that electron? Well, hopefully we can identify that electron will experience a force, so the electron will experience a force over here. So which way will it move? Look at the charges. Positive at the top, the charge of the electron is negative. It will move towards the positive over here. So the electron will move upwards over here. Okay? Right, so the electron is going to be moved upwards over here. The electron will experience a force. Okay, well let's say then, fine, afterwards, we do the same thing again. Let's say we were to chuck a proton inside this. We take a proton, we throw it in here. So let's take our proton, here it is. P, we'll put a plus at the top for the charge. Which way is the proton going to move? What's going to happen to it? Well, the proton will also experience a force. So the proton will experience a force in this direction here. Happy days. So we clearly know that charged particles will experience a force here. So charged particles are going to be experiencing a force here. This helps us with the definition of the term electric field. So what exactly is an electric field? Right, so an electric field is a region in space in which the charged particle can experience a force. So an electric field is a region in space, let's put that down, in which a charged particle can experience a force. So look, in between those two plates here, it will experience a force. So therefore, this is an electric field here. So we now have an electric field over here. Right, so that's our first definition right now. An electric field is a region in space in which a charged particle experiences a force. Okay, from here, guys, we're going to start to draw the field lines. So we're just going to erase the proton for now. Right, by convention, the field lines go from the positive to the negative. So the field lines go from positive to negative. This is a uniform field, the reason why the lines are equally spaced. So this is a uniform field. Think about the word uniform, like school uniform, everyone's the same, all the lines are the same, that's the reason why. So here, it's a uniform field. Right, so the field lines go from the positive to the negative. So some people might ask you, why is it that the field lines go from positive to negative? Why? What's the reason why? Well, this, there's a simple convention for this. It's because if I put a positively charged particle here, so let's say you put a positively charged particle there, the positively charged particle will move in the same direction as the field lines. So 
The direction of the field lines is such that it shows you the direction in which a positively charged particle will move in. So the direction of the field lines is such that it shows you the direction in which a positively charged particle will move within the field. So positively charged particle over here and it will move down over there. Easy stuff here. So let's put that down actually. So, okay, so here it is formally. The field lines show you the direction in which a positively charged particle will move in. Wonderful stuff here. Okay, so we have now done uh, a basic uh, idea of what an electric field is. So this is an electric field. It's a region in space in which a charged particle will experience a force. The lines go from positive to negative to show you the direction in which a positively charged particle will move. Right, so now from here we're going to develop an idea of the strength of the electric field. So how can we define the strength of the electric field? Maybe fields can have different strengths. Let's look at it with the following scenario. Okay, so here we have two fields, field A and field B. Yeah, they look the same right now. Okay, let's say we place an electron in the same spot of both of them. So we place an electron here, an electron over there, and we also place an electron here. Yeah, these fields are, they look identical. Right, so in the first diagram, the force which the electron experiences is going to be 10 newtons. So it, this electron gets 10 newtons of force here. But in the second one, this electron gets a force of 1,000 newtons. Okay, so here today's question, which electric field is stronger? Which electron field is stronger? Is it A or is it B? So look, they look the same. You place the same electron into both of them. One gets a force of 10 newtons. One gets a force of a thousand newtons. Which one is it? Well hopefully we can identify that B is going to be the stronger one. The reason why? It's getting more force for the same unit of charge. It's getting more force for the same unit of charge. So we can start to define the electric field strength. The electric field strength can be defined as the force acting per unit charge. So the electric field strength can be defined as the force acting per unit charge. And we can now start to get a formula in here. So look, I've written it down over there. The formula for electric field strength is going to be the following. Let's just scroll down for a bit. Uh, I'm just going to move it up to there. Hopefully you can still see it. Electric field strength, let's call it E. Do not get confused with energy. Yeah, it's not energy. That will be equal to the force acting F divided by Q. Wonderful. So here's our formula here. The electric field strength is equal to F divided by Q. Right, let's define a couple of things now. So, force measured in newtons, good. Charge measured in coulombs. So the strength of the electric field will be, will be defined as newton per coulomb. Okay, and the strength of the electric field will be defined as newton per coulomb. N, C minus 1 if you want. So E is equal to F divided by Q. That's our first formula for the electric field strength. Okay. So there we go. So electric field strength, a little bit, and now it's on the same page. We know it's going to be defined as the force acting per unit charge, which is equal to F divided by Q. Wonderful stuff. Right, guys, in, sometimes in my working out, I might not put E, I might put EFS. So if you see my working out, that simply means electric field strength. And the reason why I will put that down instead of E is because at least kids don't get confused with um, energy because that is not energy yeah clearly that's not energy newton per coulomb is not the same as a joule it's not the same as a joule here right so that's the first formula e is equal to f divided by q right we're going to look at another example to get another formula for the electric field strength in uniform fields so let's start all right so here's our second scenario right so there's two scenarios we'd look at the first one the top two at the, at the start right so the first one i've got 10 volts applied across the two plates here the second one, I've got a thousand volts applied across the plates here. Which one do you think has the strongest electric field? Which one is it? Is it the first one, A, or is it the second one, B? Which one is it? Which one has the strongest field? Which one will have the strongest field being developed? Well, we clearly know that it will be the second one. So the electric field strength is proportional to the voltage across the two plates. So the electric field strength is a proportional to the voltage across the two plates. Yeah, that's one formula. Okay, now let's look at the one underneath. So there's another one underneath here. We've got another example, A and B here. Right, now I've got 10 volts. So we've got the same voltage across both of them now. Same voltage across both of them. But the first one 
there's a greater separation between the plates. So let's call this is D1, and this is over here, D2. We clearly know that D1 is greater than D2. All right with this? So what is the relationship? Which one do you think will have the strongest field? Is it when they're really close together or when they're far away? A lot of kids don't like it when we talk about when they are far away. So which one is it, guys? Which one do you think will have the strongest field? Being really close, that they can influence each other, or being far away? Well, hopefully we can have the relationship that the electric field strength is inversely proportional to their separation. So the further they are away, the less the field. The further they are away, the less the strength of the electric field. Okay, so from here, guys, we can combine both of them together into the following. So this one and this one over here can lead to the following equation. The electric field strength is equal to voltage per unit distance over here. There we go. And we can define them in terms of units now. So electric field strength is voltage per unit distance, where V is measured in volts, D is measured in meters, and electric field strength is can be measured in volts per meter. Volt per meter. Okay, so we've got two formulas for the electric field strength. Let's have a look at them. Electric field strength is equal to force per unit charge, and electric field strength is equal to volt per unit distance. Let's write them down. So, okay, so we have two formulas. Electric field strength is force per unit charge, and electric field strength is volt per unit distance. Right, we can check it works out by equating them and looking at the units. So let's equate them both. Right, so F over Q equals V over D. Let's plug the units in. So we know force, it's Newton per Coulomb will be equal to volts per unit distance, so meter over here. And we also know that voltage is equal to energy per unit charge. Yes, so one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. So you can put that in over there. So Newton per coulomb is equal to joule per coulomb and then the minus over there. Yeah, make sure you can do that because that's JC minus one, putting it into there. So therefore we know that this CC cancel out. Right, and to get rid of the joule, we know that for work done is equal to force times by distance. Okay, so force is in newtons, distance is meter, and work done is measured in joules. So put that in over there. So we know that newton is equal to newton meter over meter. As you can see, the meters, meters cancel out, and the newton, newtons cancel out. So yes, it looks weird at the start, but F over Q has the same units as V over D. Okay, and that's it for today's session. Let's have a quick recap from the top. We have the following. We have, number one, an electric field is a region in space in which a charged particle experiences a force. The field lines go from the positive to the negative to show you the direction in which a positively charged particle will move. We then looked at the definition of electric field, the strength of the electric field. The electric field strength is equal to the force acting per unit charge. E is equal to F over Q. Notice E is not energy here, it's electric field strength. Then we also know that electric field strength is equal to the volt per unit distance. So E is equal to V over D. And last of all, I proved that the units of E is equal to F over Q is equal to E is equal to V over D. So look, we proved it, we plugged the units in, we worked them out and it was all gravy. Okay guys, that's it for another session in Sir Dazzle of Physics. Make sure you like and subscribe. In my next video, I'll be looking at radial fields guides. Okay, ciao ciao, goodbye and good luck.